Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, my name's Sam Pansino, and we're here at Fat Audio Concepts for Insane TV, episode 11. We're almost at the end of season one, so stay tuned till the end of the season, and then watch the finale that we got. Cool, huh? But first, we've got a workshop tour coming up. We also have a feature car. It's a Mazda 6, decked out to the max. It's awesome. We'll be going through a bit of feedback, and also, it's time for the Brett Files. The Brett Files, the Brett Files. I'm Brett Morris, this is Fat Audio Concepts, this is The Brett Files. And this is me saying goodbye to the microphone. Cue Brett. Speaker frequency. Yes. I've heard you tell me about subs. Yep. Mid-bass drivers. Yep. Tweeters. Yep. Frequencies. Yes. What, out of curiosity, does each speaker play? Like, why do I need a sub? And why do I need a mid-range? Can't I just have a sub and a tweeter? We have... So, you've told me on the RTA, we've got 20 to 20. Yes. In that 20 to 20, what section does the sub play? Okay, well, the sub will play from, well, it will play below 20 hertz. It'll actually play from 5 hertz. Yep. Um, up to around about 80 to 85 hertz. Yep. Um, you know, a little bit higher if, if you've got a 10 inch sub or, you know, a smaller sub will play a little bit higher. But generally, you want to try and cut it off at around about the 80 to 85 hertz mark. So if I fitted my sub and I'm hearing vocals coming through the sub, like it sounds like there's coming through the sub. Yep. Does that mean that's the crossover is too high? So I should be tuning the amp down Tune to... Tune the amp down to... Yeah, Basically, until you, you, can, you can just stop hearing those the, the vocals coming through. You'll still be able to hear a little bit on, like the, the bottom end, especially on a male vocalist. Yep. You'll hear the, the, the bottom resonance in the voice, but you should definitely not be able to hear like full con constructed words coming through it. Okay, so on, a, on the amp where it's got high pass, low pass and off, Yep. Would I be? What would I be selecting on that? You would definitely want to turn your low pass filter on. Which means that's basically letting all the low stuff, the low frequencies pass through. Logic. Cutting off all the, the high end frequencies, so the the subwoofer is not going to be trying to play the mid range and the treble, which is wasted power. It's it's better to get all that power just playing those low frequencies. So the speaker is just playing what it's made to play. It's just playing what it's meant to play. Ah, conservative. Yeah. So then the same thing could be said for your your mid bass mid range driver. Uh, again, we like to run them down to about 50 hertz to bit, have a bit of overlap between the the sub bass and the mid bass helps bring that sub bass to the front of the car. Again, as long as the speakers can handle it, some speakers won't play that low, but if you've got a good quality pair of front speakers, they will be able to play down that low. Some play deeper. So not wanting to have my front speakers distort, should I then do the opposite to the sub and high pass? So exactly. I'm only letting the high frequencies through. Exactly. And I'm you'll catching on this. You'll it's see cool. there'll be an HP, HPF written on the amplifier, stands for high pass filter. Yeah. Um, some amplifiers, <laughs> some amplifiers don't, have adjustable filters they either have on or off so low pass filter high pass filter or full range basically you know with those amplifiers you're pretty much limited to what the amplifier can do but hopefully you've got an external style processor which will probably let you do that so you would actually leave the amplifier crossover off and do all your processing through the through the processor let that control your crossover points yeah. so with your, your mid-range you want to run that up to Again, depending on the speaker, anywhere from from two and a half kilohertz or two and a half thousand hertz uh, to around the four thousand hertz, four kilohertz range, and then that's where your tweeter comes in. Again, the little one, the little one, the tiny little thing. Run that in again where you, where you got your crossover point for your mid range. Bring your tweeter in at around that, probably a little bit lower again to get a little bit of overlap and let that run all the way up to the top. So it's a, a smooth transition, so yep. if I was to sit in my car, I shouldn't hear where the sub stops and where the mid-range starts and where the mid-range stops and no. where the Twitter, it should just sound like Ideally, that's, that's what sound. you want, that's what you want. Not bad, yeah. well, I think I'm learning something here. I hope that's cleared up frequencies for you. Oh, it has, or well now I know that, you know, once Frequency I know assignment, I guess you'd call it. Once I know what speaker size I can fit in my car, I can then sort out what package will work the best for me. I should go and buy a car now. You should. Cool. And then we can pull it apart and see what size speakers fit. Cool. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do that on another Brett Files. Sounds like a plan. That was the Brett Files. Stay tuned for more Brett Files in coming episodes. I'm Brett. I'm Stupid Sam. This is Fat Audio Concepts, and that was the Brett Files. Later. Insane TV. Thanks, Brett. Educational as per usual. Still to come is our Mazda feature car, but now 
It's the workshop tour. Let's have a look. This is the Corvette sides of rear skirt that we're making. It's half a side skirt and a rear skirt to go around the quad exhaust. So we made the first mold out of cardboard, just glass straight over it. We've now glassed down the bottom lip. We'll see this thing on next week. It's going to look like almost a factory panel. A bit more aggressive than a factory panel, but almost a factory panel. Can't wait to see how this thing comes out. So here we have Project A, aka Maserati. The whole front of the car is all in primer now as well. It's had the bonnet in primer, but it's all been sanded back for its second coat. Engine bay is all done as well. This thing's nearly ready for paint. The interior's all basically been soda blasted back ready for paint as well. I think if we ask politely enough, Vito will let us film him paint this one. But you guys have to tell him. So, info at insane.tv. Ask Vito. Write some emails. Let him know that you guys want to see him paint this thing. Wouldn't you love to see a Maserati get painted? I know I would. Actually, I will be seeing it. So, But if you want to see it live, then you got to let him know because he doesn't believe us. So, let him know. 59 Caddy. Floor is all done underneath now. It's starting to look crazy. Worth's got this spray-on rubber that you put underneath. It's not stone guard. It's, a, it's like a spray-on rubber. The finish is sensational. The floor looks like it's brand new. You've got to have a look at this thing. So we'll have a look at that now. Then we'll move on to the next one. If we look on top of the hoist arm, we can see where the chassis's been all welded up and the new sill plate's been put in. By the time this stuff went over the welding hole, oh, by the time this stuff went over the welding, you can't see anything anymore. It looks all original. This, yeah, this worth rubber is sensational. If we make our way towards the back of the car, the whole floor pan just looks brand new. And then if we get right to the rear quarter panels, you can see the patches of metal that Marco has welded in the rear quarters, trying to keep the original shape. We've also welded another bracket where it was all rusted out on the rear chassis rail. So there's a couple of little patch holes in the corners as well. They've all been welded up. You can see even on the passenger side, which is technically the driver's side because it's an American car. Yeah, it's had a big silver replacement. And that way, although it's had metal replacement, there's no rust there. By the time this gets all rust treated again, yeah, that's, this is going to last a lot longer, hopefully another 50 years, who knows. Herbie's VT Commodore, body kit's all painted up, it's all bolted on, all the meshes are in place. Let's have a look around the car and see how she's come up. Back here, we've replaced the rear garnish. It used to have like a tail light that ran right across the car. It's now just a solid plastic panel. We've got the new tail lights, or sorry, the new number plate lights underneath. So that way that all works perfect. Blends into the bumper bar a lot better. It's given the car a real nice custom look. The reverse lights that used to be in here are now in these aftermarket tail lights. And they got LEDs instead. Cool, man, cool as. Good work, Herbie. Then if you look down the side of the car, we can see the side skirt. We have a look at the side skirt, runs all the way to the front here, not too low so it's not going to bottom out everywhere. We've now also got the honeycomb mesh in the front flutes as well, looking really nice and blending into the rest of the car. The bonnet of this car has come up sensational, it almost looks like these flutes have just been pressed into the bonnet, going to show our plastic slash fiberglass welding to metal technique is unbeatable. It's a flawless finish, absolutely wrapped with it. The bumper bar and the fiberglass front guards all blend up to each other beautifully. The mesh is in the front of the bar as well. Got all the honeycomb mesh to match. We're now putting honeycomb mesh inside all the flutes as well, but we will be blocking off one of them because it sits right on top of the coil packs, just making one little drain hole so the water can run away. Herbie, your car looks sensational, mate. Cool. The Ford Galaxy, it's all assembled now, <laughs> looking sensational. You gotta have a look at this thing, it's just, wow. Come on, let's have a look.
This car is so straight, it's unbelievable. The way to pick how straight a panel is, look at the reflection, try and see something in the reflection that has a dead straight line that you know, and then you look at it in the actual panel and look for any ripple or any flaw in it or any dip or any rise. If you look at the spray boots line, it is dead straight the whole way across. If you look at our metal rafters running through the paintwork, it is dead straight. You look at the airline and the white wall running across, dead straight. This car is flawless. So if you're ever trying to find a ripple, look for a reflection reference. And this car is the best example because it is flawless. All the door lines, perfect. On a car this old, uh, even new cars would be proud to have lines this great. So good work, guys. The 64 XM two-door Futura. It's almost complete. Have a look at this baby now. And you can see the back seats have been trimmed the exact same way to make it look like a two-seater even though it's a three-seater. Because he has to allow for 0.5 because he has 2.5 children. The 0.5 is a Jordan, he's about four years old turning five. And he'll fit beautifully in that middle seat at the back. If we take a look at the steering wheel, it's just been pearl coated. It's where they grab your original steering wheel and cover it in pearl. Pretty clue here. Yeah? Uh, it looks sensational in a car like this, it just gives it that old 60s look. Uh, gorgeous man. This car is sensational. It's my brother's pride and joy, that steering wheel over the whole car. It's probably his favourite bit. So good work Mario. Yeah, I love this car. And if we have a look at the rear window winder here, if I can just tilt this seat forward, how cool is that? You can see here the window winder has an ivory knob in it as well to suit the rest of the car. We've had the armrests all painted up the same colour. We've had our door trims all vinyl stamped and ready to go. The whole back of this car is now complete for the first time in 15 years now. We're heading into the 15 year mark. So we'll put the seat back down. We're just waiting on the front door trims. And this car's ready to get dyno tuned, some exhaust tips, and it's finished. Looking at the back windscreen, we can see Venetian blinds. How classy is that for a car this old? This car's running, as I said before, a Mike's Dyno 302 Windsor. In case you're wondering what a Windsor is, a Windsor is a 60 degree angled V8 engine. My car's running a 351 Cleveland. A Cleveland's a 90 degree block. So the Windsors are a smaller V, they rev higher. The Clevelands are a 90 degree V, so it's a wider engine. They have a lot more torque, but won't rev as high. Mike Steiner did my engine as well. So it's a tunnel ram injected thing that you'll see. To take a look at the car's heart. It's a Mike's Dyno 302 Windsor. That's one. These things have two safety catches. So thanks to Mike's Dyno for this. He did an awesome engine on this. Very crisp, very revvy. 302 Windsor, mild compression. It's running roller rockers. It's got a double pumper. So it's a 750. It's got a ice ignitions electronic dizzy so you don't have to worry about setting points. We've got a fuel pressure gauge so we can set our fuel pressure on about 6 psi. It's got half inch fuel lines just to make sure it doesn't run dry on fuel. We've got a nice big 4 core radiator. We've got twin thermo fans to keep it cool. This, this engine's very, very crisp. We've taken it for a few runs outside. We don't run a vacuum advance because this car's very snappy on the throttle as it is so it doesn't need it. This car is mechanically awesome. That's what we had cooking in the workshop this week. Now it's time for the feature car with Brett. Let's go and have a look. Hi, I'm here with David, the owner of the Mazda 6 you see right here. How are you, David? Uh, well, thanks, how are you? Not too bad. A bit cold tonight, isn't it? Oh, a little bit. Not, yeah. not too bad for Melbourne, though. It's not too bad. Um, 
Obviously, David's got his car here. We've just fitted some, some product in there. But before we get into that, we'll just find a little bit, bit more about the man himself. Um, I guess probably what got you started into car audio? Yeah, well, it's just for me, it's just talking about like, um, I want to have good audio with me like all the time. So like with a big home theater system, like you get a big plasma or LCD, people say, you know, half the experience is in the audio, like with a movie, hearing the explosions and stuff like that. So for me, I spend more time in my car than watching a movie or something like that throughout the week. So why not have a good audio system in the car as well? Exactly, we agree. We, we totally think the same way. Um, everyone should have a good system in their car, especially if you like your, your big music at home, yeah. have it in the car as well. And I think if you talk to most people, they've probably spent a lot of their time in the car anyway, going to and from work. So Exactly. And it's also, a lot of the time, it's their second biggest investment they're ever going to make in your car. So, But enough of that. Obviously, you've got some, some pretty cool gear in there. Um, some unique things as well. Uh, yeah, just trying to get as much uh, features and uh, gizmos and gadgets in the car as possible to make it sort of a bit unique and a bit uh, you know, more functional just day to day. So, yeah. All right, well, well, we'll have a look in the boot here and see what we've got cooking in there. Okay, so that's the boot. It's looking nice and neat in there. Um, obviously got a couple of amplifiers and a, and a, and a nice big sub there. Um, obviously all from the same brand? Uh, yeah, it's all from uh, Focal. Uh, so most of it's French, I'm told. So yes. hopefully the French do good speakers. Voulez-vous Francais, something like that, I don't know. It's uh, part of my French, I think yeah. it's the more expression. Yeah. Um, okay, so the amp on the left is, I think that's the, that's that's the, the mono, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's the the, the Focal FP 1.800, so 800 watts um, RMS, or yeah. whatever. Uh, in, RMS, uh, yeah, yes. I think it's RMS. Uh, powering the 33KX, which is a 13 inch. 13 inch sub, sub. It's, it's an odd size sub too, isn't it? It's odd size. Well, I think they do a few odd sizes. They do a, a 5 and a 9 and a 18 and a well, 15, think, yeah. yeah. So. And then you've got, I think it's a big two channel on the other yeah, side, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, a, a one. 150, yeah, I think that's in four ohms, so, yep. so I think we're running two ohms, two ohms, so I think it's around the 200 mark, yep. give or take. Yeah, it's a nice, some nice amount of power there, um, and obviously a really nice, neat install is, you know. Yeah, well, I sort of talking to you guys, I sort of let you guys know, I just wanted it to be nice and flush and have a, like, make it look like it was going to be there, like you guys do so well, and uh, I think the work speaks for itself. Yeah, and the, the beauty about this car as well is it's got a fully functional spare as well. Uh, just you know, remove that beauty board off around the, the amps and sub and you can uh, get to the spare, which is obviously you know, a good thing. Yeah, that's the other thing. I was, I was, with everything going in there, I wanted to keep it as functional as possible. And Definitely. We made that possible. Well, we should go around and have a look at the uh, inside of the car too, then, yep, I guess. Yep, sure. Okay, well, here you can see we've got the uh, custom tweeter pods. Uh, on the original a -style. Um That is obviously the original one. This is the new one. Obviously that tweeter was never going to fit in that hole. Um, how do you think the finish has come up? Yeah, well, it definitely looks a lot better than the uh, factory supplied ones from Focal. So yeah. I think it suits the car a lot better. And yeah, as again, it's just uh, making it look like it's supposed to be there. So Absolutely. And now we're inside the car, you can actually see we've uh, replaced the head unit. What head unit is that? Uh, it's the Alpine 9887. It's a very popular unit, that one. Um, has heaps of features in it. Uh, lots of tunability and a great sounding unit as well. Um, and there's also some, some hidden surprises we were talking about before. Uh, yeah, so there's a factory in the car. There's a little half glove box map pocket there. Yep. Uh, so I sourced a custom made sort of uh, touch, seven inch touch screen there that uh, runs a car computer. So that's all uh, programmed to there. So it's got music, you can run DVDs and videos, all Beautiful. that sort of stuff. Um, you can plug it into a, the OBD2 port and run boost graphs and all that that's, sort of stuff. That stands for onboard diagnostics plug. So uh, that's good. And it's running a, a GPS program as well, which is uh, from Garmin. So that all loads up just there. And you can look at the, you can play the music through there and have all the, uh, the GPS running through there all at the one time. No, that sounds that sounds like a pretty cool deal. Obviously, the bonus is it, it's like your your PC at home, but fitted into the car. Yeah, so eventually, if I'll, you get internet and you can do anything you can do on home, you can do in the car. Hopefully. Right, that sounds really good. Uh, well, 
Thanks, David, for giving us a tour around your car. No, that's all right, guys. Thanks to the guys here for doing such a great job. No worries. You're watching Insane TV. Hi, you're watching Insane Gear. Here we have the little Arc Audio KS125.4 Mini. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's a tiny little amplifier, as you can see here. Uh, this amplifier just won, I think it was Car Audio Electronics uh, Amplifier of the Year, uh, for four channel amplifiers, that is. Basically, what it is, four by 75 watts RMS, so it's good power. This will easily run a pair of splits and a sub. Uh, but the cool feature about this amplifier is the different types of inputs you can run into it. You can run straight off, off a normal head unit uh, through the RCA inputs, uh, but you can also convert them to speaker level inputs from you know, a factory head unit. Uh, and there's a little switch, where is it, on the top here, that is the input level. You can actually, uh, oh, sorry, the auto sense. Basically what you can do is if, the, you know, it's the original radio and you have no remote output to turn the amplifier on, uh, it'll actually sense signal coming in to the amp and switch itself on, so perfect for that factory integration. You can see it's got decent size, I think they're 12 gauge speaker outputs, so good size uh, speaker outputs. On the other side here, you've got, well, you know, there'd be 4 gauge inputs direct in. Uh, the two 40 amp fuses, so 80 amps, sorry, 30 amp fuses, so they're 60 amps with a current draw. Uh, full crossover control, uh, bass boost for the for the rear channels. A lot of punch out of a little amplifier. You, know, you could you could fit this easily under the seat of, a, of most cars these days, uh, or hide it behind a, a factory panel somewhere. Uh, great amplifier, Arc Audio been around for a long time. Uh, we love them. Well, that's another segment this week of uh, Insane Gear. We'll see you next week. Now on this week's feedback, we have one from Rick. Hey guys, another great episode. Been following it right from the start. Good man. I've noticed you seem to use a lot of Stinger Roadkill over other brands. Is there a reason for this? Cheers, keep up the great work. Two reasons. The Stinger Roadkill is thicker than any other brand on the market. When you're trying to lower the resonant frequency of a door skin, the heavier you can make something, the lower the frequency becomes, the less chance you're going to get of noise coming into the vehicle, and the louder your speaker becomes as well. So, Also, the aluminium side of the Stinger Roadkill is thicker than any other brand on the market as well, so there's less chance of heat coming into the car. So one sheet of Stinger Roadkill is more equivalent than any other brand on the market, so that's why we use the Roadkill. Yes, it does add a bit more weight than any other brand, but you know, when you're talking a, a big audio system going into a car, what's an extra kilo over the whole car? Let's just take a bit of fuel out or something. But yeah, Stinger Roadkill, only way to do it in our eyes. So Rick, if you stay tuned, in one of the future Brett files, we'll be covering the Stinger Roadkill, exactly how thick it is, how thick the aluminium is, and how when you do lower the resonant frequency of a panel, how it alters the sound of everything, and how the heavier something becomes, the better it sounds. So please stay tuned, but thanks for the feedback. Keep it coming, guys. That wraps up this episode. Two more to go before the end of the season. Next season's gonna start in somewhere in October, so stay tuned. In the meantime, catch up on all the other ones that you've missed out on. Remember, if you have any questions or feedback, info at insane.tv. Leave us some feedback, you know, ask some questions. Tell me what you wanna see in the next season. We're gonna have a bit more on the product review side of things coming up. We're also gonna be a bit further in depth in our installations, not giving away all our trade secrets. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I'd like to remind you about joining our Facebook group. Just search for Fat Audio Concepts, join, and chat with other car enthusiasts. Leave questions and comments and feedback for either myself or Brett, and we'll do the best to incorporate your feedback into the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, that feels good.
what did you think you were doing this? How technical is that Mazda 6? Pretty cool, huh?